Okay, let's go ahead and do the handle. I'm going to hide the blade just to keep the scene as clean and simple as possible for now. We'll go ahead and make a new sketch, create sketch, and click on the work plane. And we're going to do kind of the same idea with splines and lines here. So I'm going to go spline. And there's a little notch taken out. So I could put that in the spline, but I think that's probably going to be a little easier to do kind of after the fact. So I'm going to just sort of treat this geometry as though it is kind of whole. And grab this handle and just do the same thing. Just going to bend it up. And maybe something like that. We'll do another spline here from there to there. Hit OK. I'm going to grab the handle. And I don't have a ton of experience with splines. I, I've done most of my modeling using different techniques prior to this. Uh, but my sense is you let each point kind of control about 50% of the curve. So tweak the handle. If you're trying to modify this side, you know, let this side, let this point here kind of control that. So uh, let's go back and do another sketch, spline. There to there, hit OK. Tune it up. And repeat spline. Right click and hit OK. Grab the handle. And you know, actually, for that cut there, because it's so circular, I'm just going to make a circle here and kind of guess where the center point is. And I'm going to hit OK and give this a little bit of a drag. I guess maybe I can move it. There we are. Click the middle point, moves the circle. So I'm going to kind of line it up over here. And then I guess if I click the outside, that will scale it a bit. That's probably OK. So, you know, getting it lined up with the reference is important, but because the reference is shot at a little bit of an angle with a little bit of perspective distortion, it's never going to be exactly right. At least that's what I tell myself. So we'll add one more spline here and grab the handle and kind of give it a little twist there. So I need to clean it up. I need this stuff to intersect that I need for this not to be filled in. So what I'm going to do is grab this point and just kind of drag it to the, the edge of that circle and it's going to kind of know what I'm talking about. It'll snap in there. And then I need to go to sketch and trim. And then I can come over here and just click on that side and it'll be nice and clean there. I'm not worried about these being sharp corners. I'd rather leave them sharp corners here for the same reason that I wanted to leave the point of the knife sharp. It's much easier to come in and put a little fillet on that uh, geometry. Uh, because that is just going to be a fillet about this little piece of the geometry. If I put a fillet on this curve, the entire piece of geometry is going to be limited to being uh, smaller. Any any fillets that I put on that edge are going to be smaller than whatever this uh, this radius is. So let's go ahead and do this last part here with a line. I guess that wasn't the exact last part. Now we're the last part, so right up there and there and then once again right click and then we'll just grab these handles go a little longer with it so that's a little bit of a of a sharper fall off there and I'm to get the handle to pop up I want to make sure that I'm dealing with the handle for the spline so I'm clicking over here and then it is uh, it is available to me so maybe went a little long on this handle see it kind of snapping around there trying to find what it thinks I might be looking for.
All right. I think that looks good. Let's hit stop sketch. Oh, and it's very important that the inside of your sketch be golden like this. That means it's a closed shape so you can extrude it. If I was missing one of these segments, it would not be filled in and I wouldn't be able to uh, do a, a press pull on this. So uh, we'll hit stop sketch here. Now I need a thickness for this. So I'm gonna head back over to my reference. And unfortunately I wasn't able to find an overall thickness, just a blade thickness. But the blade thickness is whatever it is, four and a half uh, millimeters there. And if I come over to my, let's see, I think the top view, I think it's probably a little bit more than uh, double the thickness. So if this is one unit, these are gonna be like 0.6 units. So uh, let's go ahead and say, back to the fusion here, and I'll do a press pull, and we'll go symmetric. So double would be, let me select it there, would be uh, 4.5, or let's see, I guess, yep, yeah, 4.5. Let me turn my, my uh, body on here. And as soon as you do that, you see how it kind of turns red? As soon as there's a, a new body intersecting with an existing body, it thinks you're trying to do a cut operation. We're gonna be doing a new body. And so looking at that, yeah, let's go a little bit further. Let's say like 4.75. Well, that's pretty minimal, maybe like five. Now, the nice thing is we're not locked into this. I can come back and, and change this at any point and it'll update. So I'm mostly just trying to get as close as I possibly can without worrying too much about, uh, you know, perfection. So let's go ahead and uh, hide the canvas for a moment and take a look at what we got. So it's looking a little thick to me down here. I'm not sure, but I guess that makes sense because the knife has to fold in. Let's take a look at the reference. So yeah, that's probably about right because this to me looks like a, a vertical wall. So whatever the thickness is here probably extends all the way down. Let's take a look at some of this other stuff. Yeah, okay. All right, so uh, let's see. Take a look over here. In the next video, we'll go ahead and cut out the circle and these guys and maybe this piece here and uh, see how much time I got left.